Hey everyone, I'm Thomas Xiong, member of the USA 2017 IBO team. I thought it'd be a really cool idea to just put a vlog together from this year's IBO to try and show other people what IBO is all about, what we do at IBO, and what an awesome experience it is. Anyway, given that uh, one of our team members is in Boston, the rest of us all flew to Boston to group together and fly to London. Really cool Boston airport which I've been to like eight times or something. It's basically my most visited airport, even more than Houston. Um, before going to Baggage Japan to meet up with the super cool Alexander Tao, we're going to be heading to oh, a really cool restaurant here, Boston Food Court. That's a nice chair. All right. It's basically macaroni and cheese, I'm pretty sure. I've spotted Alexander style. Alex. Alex! Are you video calling right now? Yeah, I'm video calling. I'm vlogging you. you. Oh my god, dumb is you. Alex, Hi, Edward. Yeah, Edward, how are you feeling with your rent drop? <laughs> nice. How are you feeling, Alex? I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like it's humid. Yeah, not everyone is quality enough to provide you with one of these for free. Are these their towels? Oh, look at these little... They rolled up our towels for us. They're so kind. So after we get to the hotel, we decide to go down and meet some past Yusubo RSI alumni to go hang out for dinner. Um, pass by this trapped exterior swimming pool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this is uh, dinner, as you can see from the heading. The so dinner actually ended up being a pretty futile track to a restaurant too far away. It ended up being a bit too expensive. Turns out this entire place is like flooded. I don't know if happens often. Upon returning to the hotel, we actually went to the neighboring bowling alley, which actually doubled as a restaurant, so that was pretty cool. Ate some cool dinner, got some clam chatter, got a nice burger there. Edward Lee, Alexander Tao, drink. And we wake up next day, pleasant time at 3 a.m., walk down a hallway, it's a pretty long hallway, get outside, really dark, get into a shuttle, and we're at the airport. We're going to British Airways, and I have to get a Haichu, and a Charlie Gleason, invert it, boom, it's a regular Haichu, and we meet Catherine Wang, our sports team manager. That's a fairly glorious post-sunrise, then we get onto a plane, on which we fly for about 6 hours, then we get to London Heathrow Airport, in which we take a train, and then we get onto an escalator, upon which we get welcomed to London. Pass the field of fountains into an elevator and onto a car in which we go all the way to Coventry. So this trip to Coventry is pretty long. I can finally relax and we get to delve into the more deep thoughts that IBO brings about. I think it's about this time when I travel to a foreign country that I actually realize I'm really far from home in a new culture with different transitions, still got pizza and different expectations. Edward, how is this hotel? Pretty excited to have a nice hotel room all to myself, but it isn't until the morning until I realize how classically England the scene is. Get some nice breakfast, during which I actually meet the Canadian team, and we go out and explore Coventry together, see this nice classic architecture. Where are we going, Catherine? I don't know. And we venture on to an aesthetically pleasing bridge with aesthetically pleasing views. And soon we get to an aesthetically pleasing building with even more aesthetically pleasing views that's under construction. And we get into a church. And then a bears and dolls house. And then a clock museum, which we watch this very mesmerizing rolling ball clock for quite some time. Get out, go to the mall section for a bit. And we see a massive church that we soon venture into and see some amazing views. Starting now, we run in Canadian team. Let's go. We are uh, Canada. We're Team lost. Canada. We lost are. We have just exited a nice Holy Trinity Church. Um, we appear to have lost the other, um, all of the other ten members of our uh, nice walking troop. There they are. What? How do you feel about celebrating your birthday here, at Bio? Yeah. 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 Now blow out the candles. Blow, you guys know candles, he doesn't get away. Blow it anyway. So we're here in the uh, department store, very famous. Oh, they need to watch him play Tetris. Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. We're back here yeah, at the department store, uh, Primark, and we're going to be watching 
Tetris. Most, the most famous attraction here. Well, you guys have to watch this. Okay. What are the other two? I don't know. The most famous attraction of Coventry. Okay. Mr. Wait, Edward. Edward. Wait, they're coming. The pressure. No, 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 oh no. Oh my god. Oh my god. How are you feeling, Catherine? Not bad. Okay, pretty good. <laughs> Finally, we began our trip to Warwick University. Still pretty disorienting that while sitting on the left, I'm not the one driving, and while traveling on the left, I'm not the one panicking. My first impression of Warwick University is pretty great with the clouds and all, yet I would soon learn to appreciate its great size, given that we would have to go all the way from one side of the campus to the other multiple times each day. Here we are at registration. Soon after registration, we experienced one of the best aspects of IBO, the team guide, Valentino Sudario. Right. This is Valentino, our guide. Yeah, so I study at MIT, but I'm here for this uh, summer that is to so cool. a research exchange at Imperial really? in London. Yeah, so yeah, I'll be the team guy for Team USA. Dude, are you hot? Are you super psyched? Yeah, of I'm course. Psyched. I also have my brush rat. Dude, nice. <laughs> yeah, bring it to MIT. Then we wait in line for lunch, get some sandwich, get some dip. Pretty common in the IBO. Then we go outside, nice place to eat. Then we get to our dorms. We took a long time walking, we cut that out. Uh, really nice dorm room, it's got singles, it's got a nice sink, got a really nice bed, got a lot of spacious room, and then we go back, ready for the opening ceremony. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, Member of Parliament for Coventry South, uh, Jim Cunningham, the Mary Mayoress of Coventry, and the Mayor of Warwick, Olympiad participants, supporters, organizers, Huge army of helpers uh, and other guests. Finally, the 27th IBO has officially begun, and uh, we commence taking many pictures on the stage with our flags, which a lot of teams like to do. And we go and eat dinner, which turned out to be a very nice standing dinner. Got lots of socializing done, met lots of cool teams. So, quick transition to Warwick Castle footage, where I'll talk about a lot of things that we did um, the days before Warwick Castle and at Warwick Castle and after because uh, right after we had that dinner, the next day we had to surrender all electronic devices, which is a nice policy that IBO has to make sure no collusion or cheating goes on. So we ended up not being able to record too much until I got Alex's really nice camera at Warwick Castle. I always thought the surrendering devices policy was really cool, not only because it obviously prevents cheating in a big way, but also has the added benefit of increasing socializing, which we did a lot of. That day also we saw lab equipment and then we had the practical and then after that we had Warwick Castle which was indeed pretty awesome. So here we are fast forwarded to right after the theoretical at this really cool convention. Got to see some really nice cultural day stuff. Soon after the culture night, we all go back to our dorm and have a ramen cook-off. So the Indonesian team, who we were paired with, had some really nice ramen. Okay, yeah. Tell us it's better than the Taiwanese instant ramen. I've been at Taiwanese ramen in like 10 years. Never mind. No, <laughs> just, just do it anyway, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Don't eat it all. But <laughs> he wants to. <laughs> and so finally after that super fun night of partying we go to the Coventry Transfer Museum and Coventry Cathedral. So as you probably realized by now this video doesn't have much footage at all on the practical or theoretical exam slash days which is pretty intentional. One being that our devices were taken up so it was pretty annoying to have to film that stuff and also with stress levels really high it would have been pretty bad if something went badly and people tried to film feel like that would be pretty uncomfortable. So instead there's lots of social footage instead including us saying happy birthday to the Koreans. And finally, on the last day of IBO, we went to Birmingham, along with the teams from New Zealand, Aust most of Australia, and Italy. It's a super fun time experience in a classic two-decker and a really cool rail system. Birmingham was honestly incredible, which is funny to say that 
because it's really a city, but it's just so nice to be able to, you know, really go out into a nice big city with relax with some close friends, both old and new. Honestly, IBO is an incredible experience not really because of the competition. To be fair, it is an Olympiad and it's made because of the competition, but the social aspect and the connections and the relationships you make out of IBO definitely have to be the best part, at least for me. Just being able to relax and go and visit places, places you've never been before, things you've never experienced Ooh. with friends that you've made from around the world means so much to me and I'm sure others too. Anyway, after we got some really nice bubble tea from Birmingham's Chinatown, we visit the Library of Birmingham, which is honestly amazing. Uh, pretty much a tourist attraction given how cool it looks on the outside and on the inside. Just walking up closely, you feel like you're entering something great and magical, and boom, you're on the inside and you know it's great and magical. You know, coming into this IBO, I had lots of assumptions and predictions that I kind of took for granted. For instance, you know, just driving on the right side or just having dinners in which you sit down. But I was super glad to go to IBO and have it really crush all these predictions for me. Really open my eyes to what's what's out there, what you can do. Assumptions and predictions can get you far. They allow you to prepare. They allow you to feel safe, confident. Even predictions can give you a clear path to take to take what you have to get what you want. It's easy to fall in this trap, even more so because your goals can, in a sense, be predictions themselves for who you think you are and who you think you should be. I personally came to IBO with goals in the competition aspect, but I left with much fonder memories of the completely separate social aspect. On that last day, everything felt really oddly relaxing, like a great tale was coming to a close. Of course, IBO is ending, but IBO to me represents more than that. It's been so long that I've had IBO as a dream to go to, a competition to be at, and finally I was there for the second time, and finally it was ending again. And just like that, it was over. But the people we meet make this experience never ending. Here we are at the award ceremony, coupled with a dinner, and followed by a extremely lit dance party. Leaving Coventry, probably for good to be completely honest. <laughs> oh man, going to London, just chilling. All right. And finally, I found myself looking at some breakfast again, getting ready to get onto an airplane, and leaving London and the UK. Those of you watching, and everyone at IBO, the organizers, the volunteers, the team members, the jurors, thank you all for making IBO so amazing. Thanks for watching. The first time Albert wasn't ready. You guys wanna stop creating a scene? <laughs> It's the closest baggage claim we had. No, you're definitely right, but I was like, did they move to another baggage claim? Oh my god. What could possibly Wait, wait, you, were, wait you, were, you were there for the entire time? No, no, no. Okay. I went to baggage claims 1 through 4 in Terminal A, which there is no baggage claim. <laughs> <laughs> then I went to baggage claims 1 through 4 in Terminal B, which there is no baggage claim 5. That's there's true. A, there's a vague sign, like, after baggage <laughs> claim 4 that points nowhere and says, go through this door with this number. <laughs> Up some escalators, down some escalators. That's hilarious. I'm a man of my word, <laughs> but man, you got some nice thighs. And basically, the entire poem, people would just think I'm talking about, about an actual human, but at the end, I'm like, chicken thighs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you spoke that out loud? Because then, like, if you clap too, if you clap too hard, you're gonna drown them out. So you gotta snap and stomp your feet and make a soul grunt, like, like, that was my favorite one. Whenever someone says something like that vaguely rhymes, I just go like, mmm. <laughs> <laughs>
show my support, you know? I didn't even do it in English class anymore. I was in music class, and then some guy pulls a sick soul. I'm like, mmm. Hey, they took over like the East Coast, and they're like, bang, bang, they took over the West Coast by like going like, yo, I'll give you some crap, and they never gave it, just took it. And then, then later, they like took over the entire, the entirety of modern name America, and they were like, yo, the, the Spanish dudes have some land down there. And even though none of them speak English, I still want that. Even though there's nothing there but like a desert. They just took over California. And then after that, they were like, you know what's good? Barren wastelands in north. So like, we want that farmland. So they just went up north and we're like, bro, this is ours now. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson, yeah, I know this. Thomas Jefferson, he was like the... The conquering of Canada will be a mere matter of marching. That's how confident he was. His smug, he was a smug little president. And then like, he, like, he goes up north and then we repel them and we take over Michigan and burn down the White House. So jokes on them. And then later they cheat because like our, our like general got sick and died. So they, they managed to like take back Michigan, which is going to be like a uh, paradise for Aboriginal people. So thanks America.